I want to introduce some of the basic operations on sets, and I'm not going to give super precise definitions because you've probably seen a lot of these things already, and I'm just going to give some examples, and I'm going to give examples using these sets A, B, C, and D. So the first concept I want to talk about is the concept of a subset. And I'm going to first use general sets R and S, and we would say that R is a subset of S when it's written in this way, uh, with these, this little uh, sideways U and a little bar underneath. And that means that every element of R is an S. So for an example, using the sets that I have here, the A, B, C, and D, we see that every element of C is in B. C is a subset of B. And you can see that here, 5 and 6. Those are both elements of B. Every element of C is an element that's in B. But it doesn't work the other way around. B is not a subset of C. Uh, 3 is not in the set C. So you see that sometimes um, you know, one set can be a subset of the other, but they, that might not work the other way around. Of course, if it does work the other way around, if they're subsets of each other, then the sets must be equal. We could also write R as a subset of S without the little bar on the bottom. And that just means that R is a subset of S, but R is not equal to S. And this would only make sense when you're talking about abstract sets R and S. Of course, if we know the elements that are in R and S, then it doesn't really make sense to uh, make this difference between the subset with the little bar on the bottom and without the little bar on the bottom, because we know which one it is. Um, so this only makes sense when we're talking about R and S uh, as abstract sets where we don't actually know the elements. An improper subset. A set is a subset of itself. That's the improper subset. In other words, for the sets A, B, C, and D, I can say that A is a subset of A. That makes sense, right? Uh, so this would be the improper subset. And of course, if we have an improper subset, we also have a proper subset. And a proper subset is any subset that is not improper. Okay, now let's look at the union. So R union S means uh, we're looking at elements that are in R or elements that are in S or elements that are in both R and S. So for an example, we have A union B. So A union B means anything that's in A or anything that's in B or anything that happens to be in both A and B. So in this case, 1, 2, 3, and 4, that's in the union. 3 and 4 we already have. And then the 5 and 6. So we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. B union C, well, it's 3, 4, 5, 6. B is 3, 4, 5, 6. C just duplicates part of B, so we don't need to write it twice. Uh, C union D is 5, 6, 7. Take the 5, the 6, and put the 7 in there. What about the intersection? So R intersect S, that consists of elements that are in R and S. Here's some examples. If we have A intersect B, that's just 3 and 4 because A and B only have the elements 3 and 4 in common. Uh, B intersect C is 5 and 6. So B and C only have the elements 5 and 6 in common. C intersect D, that's the empty set. They don't have any elements in common. And that's a special case. Two sets that have no elements in common are said to be disjoint. So in this case, we could say that C and D are disjoint sets. Now let's look at the Cartesian product. So we write it like this, kind of like a multiplication symbol. And it means all the ordered pairs of elements from R and S. And that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Let's look at some examples, and I think you'll get the idea. So if we look at the Cartesian product of A and C, then we would take as the, the uh, ordered pairs here, the first element of each ordered pair. So the 1, the 1, the 2, the 2, the 3, the 3, the 4, and the 4. Those are all from the set A. And then if we look at the second one, the 5 and the 6, the 5 and the 6, the 5, the 6, the 5, and the 6, those are all from set, oops, sorry, we're not doing B here, C, okay, 5 and 6. So 
Uh, if you see here, it's just all the possible combinations where you take the first element from the first set, in this case A, and the second element from the second set, in this case C. Here's the Cartesian product of B and C, and here we see all the ordered pairs where the first element is from B, that would be the 3, 4, 5, and 6, and the second element is from C, that's the 5 and the 6. And it's okay to have duplicates in the sense like we have a 5 and a 5, it's, that's totally fine, and a 6 and a 6. If uh, we happen to have some overlap in the sets, then that's going to happen. And then we have the Cartesian product of C and D, and C only has 5 and 6, and D only has 7, so we have 5 and 7, and 6 and 7. Finally, we have cardinality, and cardinality just refers to the number of elements in a set R, and if we're talking about the sets A, B, C, and D, we can say the cardinality of A, and sometimes people write it with bars around it, kind of like you would absolute value. We could say the cardinality of A would be four. There's four elements in the set A. The cardinality of B, that's also four. There's four elements in the set B. The cardinality of set C, that's two. There's only two elements there. And finally, the cardinality of set D, that would be one.